Hello, this is Dr. Victoria Skirma speaking to you from the Seeds of Transformation Healing Center in Wareham, Massachusetts. And I want to talk about the month of January 2019 from an astrological and a Kabbalistic point of view. Uh, we'll start with the numerology of um, January, and I'm just going to move this camera a little bit so you can see what I have written here. Okay. There we go. So uh, we have January as the first month, of course, of the year. And uh, we add the universal vibration to that. And to this year, we have a 12-3 vibration. Uh, 2019 is a uh, hanged man year, as it were. And so uh, we start with that energy uh, for the whole year. We add the one of the January, and we get the 13-4 vibration. And uh, the 13-4 vibration is associated with the death card. Okay, as we see here, this is the death card from the uh, Rider Waite deck. And uh, death is not uh, doesn't necessarily mean physical death, or, although it can at times. Uh, but death means transformation from one form to another, transmutation. There is a need with this vibration to be willing to release that which uh, no longer serves, to release that which we no longer need in our lives, and to open up to the possibility of rebirth. The 13 vibration, uh, if we add the 1 and 3 together, we get a 4. 4 is the number of crisis, and so we do have some crisis at this time. And what is crisis? Crisis is when things happen that require us to stay within the present moment so we can deal with whatever crisis we're facing. 4 is also a number of um, building. It's the number of the builder. And so 4 is the... Uh, uh, the number of physical uh, matter. And so with this, uh, although we are uh, dying to something, we are also being reborn to something new. So this is actually a number of, of uh, letting go and then a number of rebuilding. And so uh, this particular uh, card, the, uh, the death card, is associated with the sign of Scorpio. And... Um, as January starts, we have Venus in Scorpio. Venus is in Scorpio for the first, I believe it's six days of January, and then on the 7th it moves into Sagittarius. Um, Venus in Scorpio is about what is uh, important to us on a deeply emotional level, okay? Venus in Scorpio deals with issues of betrayal, Venus in Scorpio deals with uh, dying for love. <laughs> so uh, it's a very intense, passionate, uh, can be vengeful energy. Now, Venus just uh, came out of the shadow of its retrograde. It was retrograde, I think it was October 6th to um, November 16th. And uh, it was retrograde in the signs of Scorpio and uh and a Libra. It was retrograde in Scorpio in October and retrograde in Libra in November. And so it has just come out of a shadow, came out of a shadow on Christmas Eve. So it's, but it's still in the sign that it uh, retrograded in, although not the degree. And so we kind of bring forth in January some of that uh, introspective, passionate, uh, energy and and the fact that uh, we also have the moon in Scorpio as the as the um, as the year begins uh, as in on January first. So so there is a Scorpionic flavor to January, but it is not um, it's not as purely Scorpio as it has been. Uh, especially now that Jupiter, which had been in Scorpio uh, for a year, is now in Sagittarius. But where we do have that Scorpio energy is with Pluto. And so there are a couple of things happening, uh, important things I want to talk about connected to this vibration. But before we go there, I want to show you where this sits on the Tree of Life, okay? And on the Tree of Life, this path sits right here. This is the path. This is the path of the Death Card. It is the path that connects uh, Tipareth, which is beauty, to Netzach, which is victory. It is a path that connects, if we overlay the chakra system on this, the heart to the solar plexus. The heart is, of course, the place where we connect with others on a one-to-one, on a, -one, a loving, uh, 
loving relationship. And then the solar plexus is where we get our own will, uh, where we have a, the, a possession of ourselves, our own autonomy, our sense of, of self-worth, self-esteem, and will. What do I want? And so this is a connection between the heart and the will, the personal will. There is a need to release any attachments to relationships that no longer serve. That is a challenge in this in this vibration. Venus here um, in Netzach. This is connected with Venus. This is connected with the Sun. And as I say, as the as the month begins, we have Venus in Scorpio. So that sort of doubles down on that on that Scorpio energy. Um, but Venus in Scorpio is not an easy position for Venus. Venus is not, um, I believe it's, it's fall or it's detriment. I'm not sure. I'm sorry that I don't know that, that detail. But it is not in a sign that it feels comfortable in. And so, uh, and yet, Venus in Scorpio is very powerful. So it may not be comfortable, but it certainly makes the most of its, uh, its abilities in, in Scorpio. All right. So we have that. Now I want to talk about uh, what's going on uh, on the 6th. And this, so actually, uh, on the 5th, excuse me. Actually, um, um, full disclosure, today is the 5th. I'm getting this out kind of late. And today we have a uh, new moon solar eclipse in the sign of Capricorn. And I'm going to bring this down and hopefully... I don't think you can see this very well, and I apologize for that. But here we have um, we have this this eclipse here, and in the yellow is where we have the sun and the moon. And so uh, I'm going to talk to you uh, directly because I don't think you can see that anyway. And um, okay, sorry about the camera work. I have everything sort of like uh, barely barely on stuff here. So we have a, a new moon solar eclipse. This solar eclipse um, is actually a south node eclipse, and uh, we can have we can either have a north node eclipse or a south node eclipse. There are two eclipse seasons; they're always six months apart. The south node eclipse is about what we want to let go of, what we want to release. The north node is about moving into the future. And so, just like last year, the south node eclipses are happening at the beginning of the year. The north node eclipses are happening uh, in in the middle of the summer. Uh, in the case of the North Node eclipses this month, we have them in um, on the 2nd of, of uh, July and 14 days later on the 16th, I think, or the 17th of July. So that's when the North Node eclipses are happening. These are South Node eclipses in January. We have one, it starts with this new moon at 16 degrees of Capricorn. What's interesting about this particular eclipse is that uh, 16 degrees of Capricorn is smack dab in the middle of a Pluto-Saturn sandwich. What does that mean? Well, we have Saturn at, um, let's see, where are we? We have Saturn at 12 degrees. We have the sun and the moon at 16 degrees, and we have Pluto at 21 degrees. And so the sun and the moon are at the midpoint of Pluto and Saturn. Now Saturn is structure and Pluto is inevitable change. And so there is a power struggle here uh, as the structures of power uh, meet the need to change. And so we will see that in this new moon. Now new moons are generally about beginnings, but uh, this, because it's a south node eclipse, it's also about uh, releasing and ending. So to a certain extent, this is a, uh, the beginning of the end. Okay, for certain structures, certain uh, mental constructs that no longer serve us, certain ways of relating to power that no longer serve us, certain people in power that have have done their 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 job, whatever that job may be, and it's time for them to go. So this is the energy. One of the things about Capricorn with this new moon is in is that Capricorn reminds us that uh, we only have a certain amount of time and a certain amount of energy. Capricorn and Saturn deal with our limitations. And uh, Capricorn is an, a sign that's very interested in utilizing the energy to the best of its uh, ability to the best of its limitations. And so we have to be aware that there's only a certain amount of time that we have to make, uh, to do whatever we need to do. And uh, you get to decide what you, what you need to do. This is also about self-responsibility. Okay. If we want to be, uh, 
if we want to have a say, we have to be willing to be responsible for ourselves. 100%, not blaming other people. The blame game no longer works. This is the new paradigm, folks. Okay, so we have that. So that's happening. We also have on the next uh, day, uh, tomorrow, uh, on the uh, on the 6th, we have Uranus changing direction. Now, what's interesting is that Capricorn is, you know, associated with things like mountains and, 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 and such, the earth, right? And then we have Uranus changing direction. Uranus is a transpersonal planet. Usually something happens or something, something out of nowhere. There's a lot of like, there's a lot of energy built up, seismic energy here. And so we could very well have some sort of seismic energy. Uh, event of of a, a big seismic event that 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 has consequence okay so i want to talk about that so the other thing i want to talk about um for this month and there's a lot of things going on that that are definitely worth talking about but um we have a square this month between jupiter and neptune now i mention this because this is uh, the first of three that are going to occur in 2019. And the, this one occurs on the 13th. And uh, we have Jupiter in, in Sagittarius. We have Neptune in Pisces. Jupiter uh, in Sagittarius is in the sign that it rules. Neptune in Pisces is in the sign that it rules. So these are very potent and powerful energies. Pisces deals with unity consciousness. Jupiter deals with what we believe to be true. Jupiter is more connected to uh, religions and Pisces is more connected to spirituality and the, the idea of oneness and that we're all one. It doesn't matter what we think, right? It doesn't matter what we believe. We're all brothers and sisters, okay? And so this is a square which creates a crisis and it's a crisis in consciousness. These uh, two planets can join back in 2007 seven in the uh, I think it was a 29th degree of uh, of Sagittarius right what do I believe to be true and now we come back this many years later what is that 12 years later when we get to this last quarter square and we're questioning what we believe to be true this is part of the individuation process we are questioning authority and we're not just questioning political authority which we certainly are doing that has more to do with Saturn and Capricorn and Pluto this is spiritual authority so uh, I know there's a lot Lot of things going on with the Catholic Church still with the with the the sexual abuse scandals that's just one part of this there can be many other parts of this with many other religions but it really has to do with you know religion is there to, is man's attempt to explain God to explain the unexplainable and you know it's a valiant attempt but when you make that be your dogma that's when you 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 limit yourself and this is a challenge to unlimit yourself and to allow your own experience and your own personal experience with god goddess soul that is to determine where you're moving and what and who you're going to believe and it's always best to believe your own heart and your own experience than it is what somebody else tells you you're supposed to believe okay so there's that that's happening and this is the first of three there are two aspects this year uh to neptune to, we're in a neptune year because we're in the, the the vibration for the year is the hanged man which is associated with neptune so things that are happening with neptune are very important this is one of them the other one is a sextile to saturn which is happening three times this this year and also happens in january but we'll talk about that when we get to it okay all right, we also have um, on the, let's see, what's this here? So on the 18th, it's a kind of a big day. There's a couple of things happening. We have a trine between Venus and Mars. This is a passionate connection. Venus is in Sagittarius. Mars is in Aries, very fiery. This is, uh, we actually get along with others. We could fall in love very easily at this time, but there's a flow between the male and the female. At the same time, Pluto makes a conjunction to Mercury. This is your mind going down into the depths, your psychological underpinnings. At the same time the same day the sun squares uranus this brings out our rebellious nature we might find ourselves falling in love with somebody that we never thought we would fall in love with and our parents certainly wouldn't want us to fall in love with you know all at once it happens like what happened like thunder lightning you know that that could happen okay but 
that doesn't necessarily have to be the case, but that's the energy. Sudden, out of nowhere, oh my God, what am I feeling? Things are flowing. Things have been so difficult that when you have this sort of sexual energy flowing, it's kind of like a, it's like a nice surprise, right? Okay, so we have that going on on the 18th. Um, All right, and then um, the sun moves into Aquarius, so the energy changes. We become a little bit more rebellious. And then once the sun moves into Aquarius, we have the second of the two uh, eclipses. And this is a full moon lunar eclipse, and it is a blood moon. So the, the moon will look blood red. And uh, you know, uh, full moons are always about awareness. This is at the first degree of Leo and the first degree of Aquarius. And so this is across the axis of love. We become aware of our own personal love and our love for humanity. And uh, Uranus is squaring the nodes and squaring this um, this uh, opposition. So Uranus always is uh, the wild card. There's always like some sudden thing that, that, that comes to uh, comes up with Uranus. And so uh, all I can say is expect the unexpected. Um, and then on uh, the same day, we have a square between Saturn and Mars. This is challenging to so crisis and action square. Um, Mars wants to move forward. Saturn holds us back. So there's this sense of having to take an action, but sort of feeling like you're being held back. Take the action slowly, slowly, step by step, and start building the foundations uh, that you need to help support uh, yourself, whether that be in financial support, uh, support at work. Uh, just you need to take the actions um to start to build support systems that work for you because the support systems that we have come to depend on are not going to be there for us. And so it's important that uh, we do it in a very personal way. And it's not just about me, 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 I, 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 but it is also about helping to build a new society. Uh, we're still at the very, very beginnings of that. So, you know, one step at a time with that. All right. So we have that. And then... On the 22nd, we have a conjunction between Jupiter and Venus. Jupiter and Venus are known as the uh, greater and lesser benefics, very uh, uh, optimistic connection. Um, there's there, We have a lot of joy with this connection, which is interesting because it's been very challenging up to this point. And this is occurring at uh, 17 degrees of Sagittarius. It says, an Easter sunrise service draws a large crowd. The culturally st uh, st stimulated longing for a group participation in the process of rebirth. And so we want to be reborn. We want to feel joy again. We want to feel happiness. We're tired of, uh, quite frankly, perhaps being afraid and just getting bad news all the time. We want to feel the joy and, and we have access to that joy. This actually is part of a grand fire trine. We have the, we have Venus and, and Jupiter in Sagittarius conjuncting. It's trining the, the moon in Leo and it's also trining Mars in Aries. And so this is a day where we could get, uh, even overexcited about all of this stuff, but we have the opportunity to plant a seed. So wherever 17 degrees of Sagittarius falls in your chart, you're planting a seed, a growth of your values. Remember, uh, Venus just came out of its retrograde. We've had, we had 40 days and 40 nights of, of pondering what was really important to us, especially in relationships. Now we get to plant that seed with Jupiter for expanding it out. Okay. Um, Mercury moves into, um, first of all, Mercury squares Uranus. Mercury will be in the last degree of Capricorn, squaring Uranus in the last degree of Aries. This is a crisis in consciousness square. We want to break free from the constraints of the social order that oppress and suppress us. And then Mercury moves into Aquarius, which is the sign of the rebel. And so there's a lot of rebellious energy as we move through this time. On the 20th, no, on the 25th, the next day, we have a trine between Mars and 
Jupiter. Mars is in Aries. Jupiter is in Sagittarius. Mars is powerful in Aries. Jupiter is powerful in Sagittarius. This is a trine of creative self-expression. People want to express themselves, and they will. There is nothing really holding this back, so we have to be very careful at this time. While this can work for very good um, this can be very, very good. It can also be very bad. It sort of depends on your intentions. So be very aware of your intentions. Do not overpromise. Do not overdo because you can end up hurting yourself just in your enthusiasm that you finally feel like you're free and you can do something. That something actually is like moving in your direction. So you just have to be aware of that. Remember, we, we're still we still have a lot of Capricorn energy. We still have Saturn and Capricorn. We are going to be held responsible for all our actions. If we want to be in charge of ourselves, we have to be responsible for ourselves. And we have to keep that in the back of our mind while all this really um, juicy energy is flowing. Okay. And then the last thing I want to talk about that I feel is most important is the aspect uh, between Saturn and Neptune. I don't know if you can see that. I'll just turn it up like that. There we go. This is a sextile. It's a sextile that brings us progressive change. We have an opportunity to move in a progressive way. Saturn is society and Neptune is compassion. This is part of a cycle that started back in 1989. I know I'm, for those of you who were alive and knew <laughs> in 1989, uh, these two planets conjoined three times at 11 and 12 degrees of Capricorn. And so this is a cycle that uh, goes into 2026, but this is the part of the cycle where we have an opportunity to make a change, a progressive change to help society to help each other to to show compassion to your fellow man and to start building the foundations uh and, and structures for loving one another so to speak uh as then as this this cycle ends and a new one begins in 2026 and uh that one in 2026 starts at one degree of aries so it really is a whole new world and so what we do now in 2019 and what we do in January of 2019 is very important to what the future is going to look like for us. So stay in your heart, be responsible for yourself, be willing to let go of those things that no longer serve you. There is, it, it can be very scary. Okay. If you stay connected to your spiritual source, um, just like the hanged man says, connect to cosmic consciousness okay you will move through this time with as much ease and grace as is possible it's not i'm not going to i'm not going to blow sunshine up your butt cuz it's not going to be uh, all all unicorns and 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 flowers but uh, we'll have unicorns and flowers through the through the month and make the most of those times um, be safe love one another and we're going to get through this. We're going to. We're not only going to get through it, but we are going to manifest some pretty amazing things, um, because we are aware that we co-create with spirit, and we're responsible for ourselves. And sometimes you got to do some cleanup before um, the fun can start. So, have yourself a great month. I hope this was helpful. I hope you enjoy this. Sorry about the camera work. Sorry, actually, about the camera. Um, but I wanted to get this in because somebody asked. So for the person who asked what about this, the month, <laughs> here you go. <laughs> uh, I'm doing my best to keep up and uh, uh, like and subscribe. If you would uh, like a reading with me, uh, Astro Kabbalah reading, uh, astrology reading, card reading, just contact me. Uh, you can contact me below or uh, you can email me at Vicky, V-I-C-K-I. My last name Skirbo, S C E R B O at Gmail, and uh, or you can get a hold of me on my website, thesedsoftransformation.com. Have a great month, and I will see you very soon. Bye.